internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet friends, Magic Brad here with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative. Turn up your sound so you can hear what's going down because sometimes people don't do that. They don't turn up their sound. You got to be able to hear what's happening. And I've got uh, my friend, and she was on here before. I can't remember how long ago, but her name is Diana Gogan. It's Gogan, right? Not Grogan. It's Gogan. It is Gogan. Yes, is you it got Gogan? it. Perfect. I did it. I did good. Yay. <laughs> and where are you located? I think it was like East Miami. No. No, I am in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix. So. I just interviewed a guy from um, another place in Phoenix today. Young kid, very smart. He went through, f financed himself through college with some smartness, and now he's teaching other kids how to do it. He's got a thing called Free Education University. Wow, and awesome. Just, yeah, he's from Tampa or Tempe? Tempe. Or Tempe, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what he's from. Yeah. So where are you? I am in uh, North Phoenix area, Cape Creek area. I don't know where Cape Creek is. Do you have to wear a superhero outfit when you go to Cape Creek? <laughs> well, it's that Cave Creek, C-A-V-E. Oh, Cave Creek, like the Bat Cave. So we're still in yeah. the superhero, superhero era. <laughs> <laughs> See, you could wear a cape. You know, you might have men in white suits following <laughs> you. But sure, you could wear a cape. They can't catch me. <laughs> it's crazy, man. <laughs> Need to be an, an invisible cape, right? <laughs> Right, you could fly around. Oh, gosh. Well, I was just talking with some people, and they say that the, the way things are with all the craziness and stuff, the things going on with the polarity of the Trump and Hillary thing, and now the demos and the repubs, and you got to have more fun. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just acting kind of funny and goofy. And Can you relate? Absolutely, yeah. Life, life, life can get way too serious way too quickly, yeah. and it, it sucks all the fun out of it. It does. So that was the that was a lead into the. I want to talk about relationships today, because a lot of people when they talk about relationships, their mind immediately goes into like dating. Exactly. Are you in a relationship? But I think the relationship is so much bigger than that. It could be like relationship with your your not just your spouse, but your siblings or your children or yourself or the universe mm -hmm. or your surroundings and all that kind of stuff what's what's your basic take on a con the concept of a relationship so my basic take on a concept of relationship is it's really um it's really far greater than we i think even realize you know i, I agree we we put um, relationship into um, traditional type of settings and what i found through through my work and the work with my clients is once you start to bridge over that and you start to form relationship with your surroundings, with your animals, with the plants, with the world, with the energy around you, your relationship just explodes. Your ability to have relationship, to understand the world, to understand each other, it just absolutely opens up. And not only does it open up wide, but it also allows you the opportunity to go really deep, really deep in understanding and feeling connected more to the world around you. And in the flip side of that is you get to understand more about yourself. Yeah, that I've got, a, it, oh, it, it does to me because I've got a, you know, I started doing magic when I was a little kid. And when you're doing magic in a room, you have to be conscious of who's behind you and the other sides and stuff of different angles of things. So you need to be aware of your, your relationship with your environment. And then I've also got a black belt in Taekwondo. So you got to be aware of the relationship of how people are and where they are and the relationship of your body within the environment and all that kind of stuff. But like when you talked about being aware of nature and stuff, like do you need, need to be in tune with the trees and the squirrel that is running around the tree and stuff? I, yes. But I think that it's not where you sit and you ohm and you're in this Zen like place in order to do that. I mean, absolutely you can but that doesn't fit into most of our regular lives. It's just becoming aware of that. It's like when you walk down the street in your neighborhood and you're like, you were talking about, you're aware of all the people around you and you know them. And, and so you 
you sense, you know, whether they're having a good day or a bad day or whether they want to talk or whether they're in a hurry or those sorts of things. And we can have that same awareness with, with nature, like you were talking about, or with animals or just even the energy in the space that we are. Now you work with horses, right? I do work with horses. Yes. Horses, all animals, but yeah, horses a lot of the time. Well, because someone has suggested a book to me, and it was about this place that's in Arizona. It's called Miraval or something like that. Yes. Mir Mir yes. Miraval. Uh -huh. And it was interesting because the thing was about um, it's not about the horse or something like that, and how horses are sort of intuitive. They can kind of sense when you're scared or whatever, and they're really trying to protect you in situations. And like I mentioned earlier before we got on, we have a dog that we just bought and I was thinking that the dog would start whining when we left because the dog was was going through separation anxiety and didn't want to be alone but the trainer told us that the dog's more concerned about you going out into the world but it's just a shifting of the coin of how a relationship is perceived and I think that could help in in human relationships if you see things from the other person's point of view as opposed to your own blind blinder it's like a oh. ho horses use blinders, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do sometimes. But I absolutely agree with that. Um, you know, we've heard that saying, to understand somebody walk a mile in their shoes. Mm -hmm. And we tend to interact with the world, P people included sometimes, I think, but the larger world, you know, I'm going to be talking about nature and animals and things like that, in more of a traditional sense. You know, we know they're there. We assume, you know, it's a natural assumption to think, you know, like you with your dog, when you left, the dog was having some separation anxiety. So there's, there's some beliefs that we hold in society about just the way nature and animals are. But once you kind of peek underneath the cover of that, and you start to dispel those traditional beliefs and ways of thinking, you come up with some really amazing ways to interact and connect and understand them better, just like you with your dog. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that was a whole new way of looking at that. A lot of the, one of the key things that I teach is that it's not as so much what you do or what you learn, it's who you are being in that process. Because who you are being in that process is really where the relationship with anything starts, mm -hmm. whether that's with yourself or with some, someone else. So when we, um, you're talking about the horses, you know, when we, when we move into their space, they have developed that ability to see the unseen. That's how they've survived for thousands of years in the wild. And that is naturally carried over to domestic horses as well. And so when we step into their space, they are already sizing us up. But what happens a lot with us is we're shutting all of that stuff down. You know, we're shoving okay. it in, we're ignoring it. And so when we're showing up in relationship with them in that space, we are showing up less than ourselves. So is that kind of like, um, say you go to a networking event and you want to look confident, so you stand up straight and you straighten your tie or your skirt or whatever you're wearing. <laughs> but but if that's... Cape. Or your cape, like a superhero. <laughs> yeah, we, that's right. <laughs> Fix my cape. So, so that people will perceive you the way that you want to be perceived. But do, do you think that there's an underlying thing in there that where they sort of subconsciously go, they're posing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we've all had, we've all been on both sides of that story in a networking meeting. You know, we go to a networking group. We, you know, we put on that brave face, we walk in, but inside we're trembling. And if anybody were to say boo, you know, we might turn and run the opposite direction. But we've also been on that receiving end where somebody has walked in and we can tell they're putting on that brave, bold front, mm -hmm. but it's not really who they are. You right. Know, so like if you did develop a, rela a business relationship or a, a social relationship with that person, then a little bit later you find out who the true them is and you think, well, I don't really know that I like this person the way that they are. They, they really oh, yeah. are. So, exactly. Or you can't even find that common ground because that that person is so incongruent, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to adapt and mold to the situation outside of themselves rather than really being connected to who they are inside of themselves. So summarize, what, what, kind of, what kind of coaching and consulting do you do? So I work with people to, to really develop, I guess, what you would call that inner game. We all have those greater visions and those greater ideas 
but it unless we are who we need to be inside it's a real struggle to achieve those or we never achieve those you know we put the barriers up and we say oh you know i can't do that i i don't have blah 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 you know i don't have this knowledge or i'm not that kind of person even though it's something you really want to do it's all about developing who you are inside so that when you walk into that networking meeting you can say you know i'm I'm a little unsure of myself. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little anxious. Okay. But I'm just going to go in and do this anyway versus trying to ignore that you're nervous and anxious and putting on that really brave front, which is going to crumble, you know, in a second potentially. So that that situation, if someone senses that you're uh, nervous and not real confident, they might come over to you because they're a helpful type person. And that might be the better person to connect with rather than putting on a front and being somebody that you're not and someone connects with you because they think maybe you are that person then later they find out you're not and then they're yeah exactly and sometimes what happens is when we put on that front or that facade or that mask then when somebody thinks that's who we are then we tend to feel like we have to continue to play that role for them sure and so we get further and further away from ourselves so it's all about owning who you are inside and just like you said, when, when you show up who you are, you know, 100% would be great. I think 90, you know, 80 to 90% is even good, a big stretch sometimes for people just to show up who they authentically are. When you show up that way, other people are reading you. They pick up your energy, they pick up that, and they will connect with you at that versus, you know, if I look at you and I see, you know, I'm seeing something on the outside, but I'm sensing something else is going on on the inside. I'm going to be kind of hesitant. Sure. You know, I'm not going to know how to connect with you. I'm all, I'm going to be watching for the shoe to drop, you know, so to speak, and, and the rest of whatever it is to come spilling out. So I'm not fully engaged with you either. And that's such a big part of relationship. And I think when we, when we show up that way, we really prohibit that relationship. We really prohibit that really deep human desire to be known, to be liked, to be seen and respected for who we are. Yeah, I know I run into that uh, situation because I'm I'm sort of an introvert extrovert. I'm a Gemini, so I kind of play both sides because I can get on the stage and perform and do comedy and do magic. But right. I like to be by myself too. And sometimes because I do the magic thing, I think some people look at me and they're, they're, they're thinking that I'm hiding something. There's something that's that's... <laughs> It's secret that I'm not, but I'm pretty open. I mean, on the internet, my name is out there. My address is out there. My phone number is out there. I'm not too concerned about identity theft because my my money is hid somewhere else. And if something happens, it happens. It's a higher power that's doing it. What are you going to do? So yeah. I keep myself pretty much an open book, but I think some people also look at that. They're, they're skeptical, especially with the internet these days. There's so much. A friend of mine just got her page duplicated. You know mm -hmm. how people do that kind of weird stuff. And there, I think people are a lot of people are afraid of that kind of yeah thing that's going on. And and I think speaking to that, the it's a lot of times that fear that has us putting on those masks, mm -hmm. so that you know something bad doesn't happen to us, or we don't feel vulnerable, or we don't feel uncomfortable. Where that is really, you know in those spaces, that's where the really good stuff happens. That's where we learn more about ourselves. That's where we can connect with other people at a much deeper level. It's not a superficial level. If, if you're showing up in an are uncomfortable and vulnerable with the right people around you, you know, that's where some really good juice, that's where the good stuff happens. Well, that, that's also a, a good reason to have, I mean, I'm giving props to coaches and all that kind of thing. But it's good to have a coach because they can kind of shine light on stuff that the, your average person probably might not tell you and you cannot see because, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you're, you're hiding it yourself. And someone might say, you know, you don't look good in that suit. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. What do you mean? Right. I paid $750 for the suit. <laughs> yeah, well, he's trying That's to sell you. The salesperson said I look you know, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, well, he's wrong. And he got your money. So... Yeah, and that's that's actually part of, uh, the, you mentioned earlier the work that I, I do with horses, and we talked a little bit about how horses really can see the unseen. Mm -hmm. they're, they're sizing us up when we step into their space so that they know how to respond. You know, that is it, is it 
are they comfortable? Are they going to run away? You know, are they, are they going to stand their ground and fight? You know, what is that? We get so used to being who we are in an inauthentic way mm -hmm. that we, we don't realize we're even doing that. We, we lose track of that authentic self. So when people come out and we do some work with the horses, if the horse senses that there is something going on inside that they're not showing on the outside, the horse responds a certain way. I have one horse that even when I go out and I've had one of those days and that's my favorite place to go and unwind, but I will still, you know, wear that mask out there pretending that, you know, the day's behind, I'm just going to ignore it and go out there. He can tell instantly when I'm chewing on something inside and I'm not fully present. What, what do they do? So he will, he will kind of like come up and headbutt me and push me, you know, not in a mean way, but he's like, okay, come on, you know, poke, 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 something, you know, something's going on until I just break down. And I was like, all right, yes, you know, I, I didn't realize it. I'm doing it again. And as soon as I do that, you can just feel that deep exhale where all the tension goes out of the room. Is that a standard thing that horses will do is the little nudging thing or is it different in different situations all the time? You know, it's different in different situations. You know, he and I have that relationship, talking about relationship. You know, he's the one that can call bullshit, <laughs> you know, when I bring it into his space. Or horse um, I've got another horse who's like, oh, it's you again and you're doing it and I want nothing to do with it. And he'll just walk away. Oh. <laughs> so it's, it's really different, you know, with different personalities, you know, whether they want to poke at you or whether it's like, oh, when you figure it out, then come see me kind of thing. Very cool. And I, I don't remember, do you do retreats and stuff out at your space? I do, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we, I do um, oh, everything from personal one-on-one -on -one to uh, two-day retreats, um, typically, you know, over the weekends um, out at my place. In fact, I've got a, one coming up in March called Unbridled Leadership. It's, it's a corporate retreat. It's a, a leadership development retreat, which we're really excited about doing. Oh, cool. I like how you uh, unbridled. You kind of put in the horse thing in there with the little word. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, I don't like to do these too long because people have their busy, busy lives. So I don't know why they are so busy all the time because they're, they don't leverage. That's why. But there you go. But I'm going to sign this one off. But you, could you share how to get a hold of you in case someone listens to this and sees it and wants to learn about? Absolutely. Leverage. Absolutely. Uh, you can go to my website, firehorseranch.com, F-I-R-E-H-O-R-S-E-R-A-N-C-H.com. I have to make sure I can spell that. <laughs> <laughs> or you can also reach me at diana at firehorseranch.com. And I would just, you know, I would just love to connect if you have any questions about the horse work or you're interested, you know, have want to connect over a relationship, any of that, you know, it's all good. This is like, this is. This is about building relationships, and that's well, keep, what I love. Keep me posted about your event and stuff. I don't know. Is it closed? Is it full? Is it uh, open to other people? And I'm assuming you have others coming up. But uh, Yes. The, so the Unbridled Leadership, we do have a few spots still open for that. Okay, because I like to promote events because that's part of my mission is move this online chatter back into real life activity because it would be cool if someone was local and wanted to actually go there and meet you and the horses and all that yeah. kind of stuff. You know, and ironically with this one, we don't have anyone local signed up. <laughs> yeah, really? we've got a lot of people flying in, so. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All righty. Well, I'm going to sign this one off, so thanks again for spending the day at Synergy Cafe. I appreciate it, and uh, we'll do more later. All right. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Peace.